we have here the case of 7th Fleet Security Services Inc. versus Loque, which deals with the concepts of constructive dismissal, floating status, general return to work orders, and abandonment. Rodolfo alleged that sometime in May 2006, he was hired as a security guard by SF Security Services Inc. or SF Security. He narrated that on the 25th of December 2013, he was suddenly relieved from his post upon the request of SF Security's client. The next day, he received an order suspending him for 10 days. After the lapse of his 10-day suspension, or on the 7th of January 2014, he reported for work. However, SF Security informed him that he was placed on floating status and he was just advised to wait for a call. Rodolfo further narrated that on the 16th of May 2014, he received a letter from SF Security directing him to report to its office within 48 hours from receipt thereof. Rodolfo claimed that he went to SF Security's office on the 19th of May 2014, but he was not allowed to enter and was made to wait outside the office. Before leaving the premises, he handed a letter to SF Security to inform his readiness to work for duty on the same day. SF Security wrote a second letter dated the 28th of May 2014, allegedly to make it appear that he failed to report for work despite its return to work order. In a letter dated the 11th of July 2014, Rodolfo inquired the status of his employment. However, SF Security refused to provide him with work. On the 28th of July 2014, Rodolfo filed a complaint for constructive dismissal against SF Security. SF Security admitted the suspension of Rodolfo for a period of 10 days starting from the 26th of December 2013. However, it asserted that on the 14th of May 2014, it sent Rodolfo a letter directing him to report for posting, but the latter did not comply with the directive. On the 28th of May 2014, SF Security sent him another letter re reiterating the instruction to report for posting. However, it still received no word from Rodolfo. According to SF Security, it was surprised to learn of Rodolfo's complaint for illegal dismissal. Was Rodolfo validly placed on floating status. The Supreme Court stated that in security services, the floating status or temporary off detail of an employee may take place when there are no available posts to which the employee may be assigned, which may be due to non-renewal of contracts with existing clients of the agency or from a client's request for replacement of the guards assigned to it. It added that while there is no specific provision in the Labor Code of the Philippines governing the floating status or temporary off detail of employees, Article 301 of the said law, by analogy, considers this situation as a form of temporary retrenchment or layoff. The court further stated that conformably with the above provision, the placement of an employee on floating status must not exceed six months. Otherwise, the employee may be considered constructively dismissed. Furthermore, the burden of proving that there are no posts available to which the security guard can be assigned rests on the employer. However, the court also stated that the mere lapse of six months in floating status should not automatically result to constructive dismissal. The peculiar circumstances of the employee's failure to assume another post must still be inquired upon. In the present case, the Supreme Court found that Rodolfo was placed on floating status beginning on the lapse of his 10-day suspension on the 7th of January 2014 and that he had been on floating status for 6 months and 21 days at the time he filed the complaint for constructive dismissal on the 28th of July 2014. The court also found that although SF Security sent Rodolfo letters dated the 14th of May 2014, and the 28th of May 2014, the same were in the nature of general return to work orders. According to the court, jurisprudence requires not only that the employee be recalled to the agency's office, but that the employee be deployed to a specific client before the lapse of six months. The court stated that considering that Rodolfo was placed on floating status for more than six months without being deployed to a specific assignment, he was deemed to have been constructively dismissed from employment. Rodolfo was granted the reliefs of separation pay and back wages. Could Rodolfo be said to have abandoned his employment? The court ruled that with the finding of constructive dismissal, it followed that Rodolfo could not have abandoned his employment. The court stressed that abandonment is incompatible with constructive dismissal. 
the court reiterated the principle that abandonment as a just cause for termination requires a deliberate and unjustified refusal of an employee to resume his work, coupled with a clear absence of any intention of returning to his or her work. The following elements, according to the court, must therefore concur. Number one, the failure to report for work or absence without valid or justifiable reason. And number two, the clear intention to sever the employer-employee relationship with the second element as the more determinative factor and being manifested by some overt acts. In the present case, the court found no proof that Rodolfo intended to sever his employment. On the contrary, the court found strong indications of Rodolfo's desire to resume work. According to the court, after Rodolfo served his 10-day suspension, he reported for work but was instead told that he was being placed on floating status and instructed to wait for a call. Rodolfo also sent SF Security a letter dated the 19th of May 2014 to inform the latter that he was ready to report for work and a letter dated the 11th of July 2014 to inquire on the status of his employment. He also filed a complaint for constructive dismissal shortly after the lapse of his six-month floating status. For the court, his immediate filing of the complaint sufficiently established his desire to return to work and negated any suggestion of abandonment. In addition, considering that Rodolfo had been in the service of SF Security since 2006 or for eight years already before his dismissal in 2014, Rodolfo could not have such intention to abandon his work. The court concluded that the totality of circumstances negated the existence of a clear intention to sever the employment relation.